We have an unfortunate event. So I was heading down the freeway on the off ramp to work and uh, this is what we're gonna be fixing today. So actually I blew out the ball joint. As you can see, I blew it out here and it snapped uh, the steering and this slammed onto the freeway. So I was going down the 99 turning on one of the off ramps uh, to a main street and then this happened so luckily I didn't crash the truck but this is what broke so let's get to repairing it okay so first of all to take this all apart of course um, I just took a crescent or an adjustable wrench took off the nut off that end uh, took it off here this since it snapped I put the nut back on to bang it down um, but yeah you gotta bang that out and then same here of course these have a uh, cotter pins in them to lock them in so you of course have to take those cotter pins out before you could um, break the bolt loose and then I used a uh, allen wrench to take off my um, brakes the brake calipers if you want to know how to take these off look at my uh, install video where I installed the uh, rotors and the new brake pads and stuff and I'll show you how to take that off and then of course uh, after you take that out bang these out uh, since the bottom one broke um, you leave the top one in take off the bottom one and then take it off here so take that bolt or that uh, nut off and then get this whole um, spindle off as a unit and then of course take the top ones out and then press this back up this one should come off pretty easily these ones the bottom ones are pressed in pretty hard so you're gonna need this tool which has these couplers so depending on your vehicle will depend on the sizes you need and the instructions of how to use this is all are all in there um, so that's what you're gonna need you can rent them I think they take out like a hundred two hundred bucks to rent these or you could go down to Harbor Freight and buy one yourself so this is what we need to do to take it off and once that's off then we're just going to swap on the new stuff um, so I just want to be able to swap on the new stuff to get it into the driveway so that way I could work on on it you know um, at a more convenient location instead of the street as you can see in the middle of the road so that's what we need to do and then we're gonna check out the whole steering mechanism um, to make sure that's all good and uh, of course the sway bar and uh, make sure nothing else messed up. All right, so here's the damage on the driver's side. So as you can see the upper ball joint here, um, there's no uh, defect or no uh, broken components. But as you can see on the steering uh, tie rod in, the outer is sheared off here and um this is the part that sheared off so as you can see sliced it right all the way through i don't think this is a defect i think it broke because the ball joint broke and all the stress was on the steering itself so uh this got sheared off uh the casting or however they uh they forged the spindle um no damage was done there so that's that's a good thing but the big problem is this ball joint. So if you look at it, that's just grease. Um, there's really no defects on it. Uh, these little lines into it have uh, veins that grease it. So that's no defect. But if you look into the inside of it, there's a noticeable uh, gouge out of it. And, or actually it's cracked so if you look closely that all that right there is a, a inner sleeve and uh, that's a piece of it right here as well so the crazy thing is um, with this ball joint is there is inconsistencies between uh, this one and the other one I bought uh, before so I ended up upgrading to the Moog and most of the stuff is uh, $20 upgrade but for the um, 
the pitman arm or the idler arm for the steering uh, where this connects to here um, the idle arm that holds that um, that uh, whole assembly in place that portion was like a hundred dollars compared to like thirty five dollars so I didn't upgrade that to the Moog um, only because it does nothing but brace the steering and um, everything else is Moog uh, the Pitman Arms Moog so or Moog however you pronounce it USA made <clears throat> so they claim but anyways uh, this one right here the the reason why I upgraded too was because there's inconsistency in ball joints um, there's one I got that looked identical to this except it was a smaller diameter here and it fell out of my a arm the uh, the time before when I assembled the new ball joints and it was like two years ago so these were this one was only good for two years and then I had to take it back buy another one and uh, because I replaced them all but one of them was wrong and I took it back they gave me another one that looked like this same diameter except it didn't have these ribs and that one was loose in there and it fell out so that was no good then I went to another uh, O'Reilly same thing with uh, uh, AutoZone they did the same thing but I went to another O'Reilly because they sent me to like three or four different ones and uh, they actually had the same one with the little ribs and the only thing I noticed that was different from the passenger side was this one right here has an outer shell an inner shell and the ball joint so the other one on the passenger side it was just the outer shell and the ball joint um, so this one articulates in three different spots it moves uh, internally and uh, also with the ball joint and then that internal housing moves uh, with this external housing so it pivots this way and then there's a housing that pivots around the ball and then that housing that pivots around the ball pivots inside of uh, that the housing that gets pressed into your a-arm so that's the one that broke and that was that's up and as you can see the tie rod in uh, sheared straight off so that's it what I'm gonna do is run through the process of taking everything apart and then uh, reassembling it. We're at a point where we installed the top ones uh, and the lower all on the driver's side as well as the uh, steering and uh, I took off the passenger side and everything the tires uh, for the driver and the passenger side but as you can see this is all new uh, I'm gonna take it all off anyway so I could replace the steering assembly in the middle right there all the way down the pitman the pitman arm and the uh, <clears throat> the other arm that looks like the pitman arm on the other side uh, which holds all the steering rack and I'm gonna get rid of uh, that and replace it with the Moog and the other arm is called the idler arm so as you can see underneath the car right here there's a gouge there is a gouge on my rim uh, slightly from this so let's see can't see it yeah so right there there's a gouge and then um, I replaced this right here which is your uh, tie rod and then as you can see up here I replaced the upper ball joint the lower ball joint down here um, right in here just to get it on the driveway uh, but now we're gonna replace the pitman arm which is this goes to your power steering and then the idler arm which is this one right here so that's the idler arm it bolts up into there and then the connection link here I believe this is called the rack and uh, but I'm not completely sure it says on one of those boxes um, but it's the whole steering assembly down here so I replace, I'm replacing this um, I'm taking this back off I'm gonna replace these uh, sway bars or the front stabilizer bar uh, 
bushings and bolts and stuff. I got the Moog. Everything's Moog except for this thing because there was like an $80 difference in the upgrade for the lifetime warranty upgrade. Uh, since I already purchased lifetime warranty parts, I upgraded to the Moog to get the USA made ones. And uh, yeah, for some reason the idler arm is $100 more. The Monroe uh, shocks right here, the blue ones, I'm gonna replace those. Those are lifetime warranty as well. And uh, the bushings, I'm not gonna mess with the bushings up here. Um, those are a pain in the ass the last time I had to replace them. So if I got to replace those for some odd reason, I might just buy upper and lower A arms. Um, so yeah, let's. I'm gonna just take everything off so that way I could take it back and get reimbursed the money since I fronted the money for all this uh, component, all these components here. And uh, so might as well get reimbursed for that $800. Um, $800 includes the pitman arm, um, the stabilizer arm, or the idle arm here, uh, this piece right here, tie rod, tie rod, um, the little clamp that connects them both, uh, this piece right here that connects your sway bar, uh, the bushings, upper and lower ball joints. That was all 800 bucks for those parts. If you buy the other brand, um, you're looking at, I want to say, uh, 700 bucks. So let's get all that stuff out and uh, let's see what it takes. Okay, so in order to get your uh, sway bar uh, grommets and stuff off, um, you're going to need a crescent for the top up here. Um, that's what I used. Let's see what size it is though. So it's a 14 on top and a 14 for the nut on the bottom. And remember the order that it went in, um, because if you don't, uh, then you could have issues. So at the very top is the bolt head, then you have a washer, then you have a, a rubber grommet, a hard rubber grommet, then you have the, um, the sway bar here or the steering stabilizer and then you have another uh, rubber grommet below it and then you have another washer so from there you have a sleeve the metal sleeve another washer another rubber grommet and then at the bottom underneath your a-arm you have a, a, a rubber grommet a washer and then a nut so that's a 14 as well so as soon as you take it off with the 14 the um, the washer will fall out and then your bushing will fall out or your rubber bushing um, one thing to know is I don't know if this is under a load like a preload so what you want to do or what I did was I used my uh, my jack to push up on the a arm to kind of uh, allow this to uh, lift up a little bit and apply pressure to the top of it just so it don't snap down or anything and uh, Same thing when you take out your shocks, so I'm gonna take off my shock and then I'm gonna slowly lower the jack to allow it to um, fully extend down so that way it doesn't slam down and um, We'll see how that works out so just follow along and uh follow the same process I do so 14 to take off this side and then um, you're gonna use a 13 to take off your uh, your shock so to take off the blue part there's two bolts down here and one bolt at the very top so take that off so this is what the bolts look like to take off the bottom portion of the shock so right up in here that's where these go and then on the top side you're gonna need to use a 14 millimeter socket to take off the top portion of the shock to drop it down so when taking off the top portion of the shock it has this metal piece a metal washer or a metal hat and um, you have the rubber grommet that go in on the top side of this 
directly down with the nut and uh, you may at the bottom you have to leave the two bolts in do the top first before you do the bottom or else they'll spin and uh, you want to use a uh, air tool to take it off because if you do it by hand with the wrench it'll spin the shaft internally and it, it won't come off so keep that in mind when you're doing it unless you could do it really fast and try to break it loose before it starts to spin so this is what you have you have a grommet that goes underneath the uh, upper arm and then one that goes on top with the washer and a washer and then of course you have this assembly that we just took off of the sway bar and this is your shot so I'm gonna get those replaced too because they're lifetime warranty um, and then as you can see we dropped it down back to uh, we just lowered it and uh, everything's good the thing that's keeping this together is the upper and lower um, ball joint so keep that in mind if you're taking out the ball joints um, make sure you replace them before you take out your shock so that way nothing flies apart and before you take out this uh, sway bar um, bolt assembly in there so since I already did this one um, the ball joint yesterday I could uh, let it hang here but for the other side what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put something underneath here to hold the assembly together still so that way um, I could take everything back and then uh, I could also take the ball joints off okay so to get your steering um, your steering off you're gonna need a 19 a 19 socket to take this one off uh, on the ball joint end and the other one as well um, so we'll take that off right now now to get this one off you're gonna need your 19 socket and that takes off the pitman arm and then for this one it's a, a very large um, it's a very large nut I'm gonna use a crescent wrench because I don't have a socket that big I don't think so use a crescent wrench to break that loose and it has a lock washer here this is probably like a 30 or something so once you take it off with your 12 inch crescent wrench put it in a, a put it in something so you don't lose it and in order to get this off you're gonna need a puller um, so you could rent one of those and what you're gonna do is take the the two jaws or the three jaws grip it on each side and push on the center so that way this pulls down um, you might try to wiggle it uh, get a pry bar and try to pop it down but this is splined so more than likely you're gonna need a puller um, and then you can pull that down and remember when you're taking off these bolts you got to use some cutters so I use these to get rid of the um, the cotter pin that bends around these I grab them like that and then I'll pull them out and like kind of wiggle it out to get those off so you take this bolt off here and then you take the two off up here so let's figure out what size those are so you might need an extension to get through your lines but so to take your uh, idler arm off up here you're gonna use a 18 millimeter to take off the two bolts up here and then you're gonna continue to use 18 on that just the same way you took this one off and then you're gonna take off your steering uh, on the other side on this one and then the same on your spindle area and then just repeat the process all the way down so while you're at it 
I would also change the grommets uh, for this sway bar if they're rotting. So the one that you're gonna actually need to take this off will be a 19. 19 fits good. And then um, an 18 for this these two up here. Okay, so the way I had to get the bolts off for the uh, this part is there, it's a bolt on the inside of the frame sticking out like that and then you have a nut. So what I ended up using was a 19 and with the extension and uh, put a crescent wrench on this side and hold it and then undo it so that way when you come around here you put it in this hole here and uh, you unzip it and then this hole up here you should be able to reach the other one um, with that extension and then use a magnet on a little thing like this so use one of these to stick in there and pull out your uh, bolt and then you could grab it easy easier than uh, trying to fish it out some other way. If it ever falls, you could push it out to the front of this uh, area here, push it out. Um, but there is a uh, some type of um, blockage in the front up here. I think it's bent up or something. So uh, try to pull it out the first time through this hole and you should be okay. So to take off uh, these, what you need is you need to use a 19 for the top and then I was able to use a 15 16 for this bottom down here to take this off and then um, let's see and then to take off the upper ball joint what you're gonna need is a number 13 to take off these and uh, they'll get all that off. So number number 13, number 19, number 15, 16 to take off the ball joints and they'll come off. Okay, so to use the C-clamp tool to take it off, uh, basically use the smaller hole uh, coupler fitting down here. Use the size of the sleeve that you need that would go around your uh, ball joint. Then you use the larger one up here to slide over your ball joint and then you tighten it so that way it pushes down on the, uh, the shaft on the ball joint until it falls. Um, to install the ball joint, you just reverse the process. So to install it, uh, basically you put the large one up on top uh, you put the bottom, uh, this up here, uh, this um, canister on the top, you put the large one on top and you put the smaller one at the bottom and it basically this pushes up on the base of the ball joint seating it in and what you want to do is make sure that it's square as you push it in. If it goes crooked it'll get wedged and it won't go any further. Um, you could correct that by shifting this base around and trying to push up the end that's um, too far down. But all you do is just keep pushing it until it goes all the way down. One downfall to these uh, C-clamps that they use is they're too small. I wish they were about an inch taller and uh, less thread for the shaft because you don't use all the shaft, uh, the threaded end of it. You only need like maybe three inches or two inches of it. Um, but it's a universal tool. So it can press out your uh, universal joints on your drive shaft. And that's why it's probably, uh, it has a longer thread uh, to accommodate those jobs. But for the ball joint, I wish they had one that was just dedicated to the ball joint. So that way 
you can maximize it. So as you can see, it's a sleeve. You have the larger end. You have these uh, grooves. You sleeve it in there like that. And then this faces down on here. And then the bigger end goes on top. And it always uh, gets used in this direction. Just take a hammer in. Tap it down because it wedges itself in there. So, as you can see, the larger end so it sleeves over and pushes down on it. So, that's the way I use it. And then, uh, to assemble it, the larger end goes on top, the cup goes on top, just like that. And then this pushes on the base of the ball joint. The smaller end pushes on the base of the ball joint, pushes up. Don't put your uh, the end in, um, your Zerk fitting, until you press it all the way up.